Everyone has their favorite game, that one gem from their childhood full of fuzzy memories. But for every time I've seen someone say, this was my favorite, I've seen another saying, no, that was bad. My favorite thing was actually better. Don't do this, it's just a petty and mean-spirited way to be. Unless you're talking about mumble rap. Gucci guy, Gucci guy. For all the back and forth though, I've never seen a bad memory of Ultima Online. Every comment section is always full of stories, reminiscing about old adventures and how good the game used to be. So many MMOs like to put on their ad reads that you can play the way you want to play, which just isn't true most of the time. This is my biggest beef with literally every MMO on the market. Yes, you can pick whatever class you want, and sure, they all play different, technically. At the end of the day though, you're still going on the same 1-3 to three pathways through the world zones from level 1 to max, and you're still smashing keys 1-4 through four on your keyboard until the monster dies. All the pretty colors might look different, but you yourself are physically doing the same thing. That wasn't how it worked in UO. Instead of character levels, you got a pool of skills and stats that grew as you used them. So if you felt you were dying too quickly in dungeons, you could decide to take some time, let skeletons wail on you and improve your parrying. Or maybe you thought, hey, I actually liked Kevin Costner and Robin Hood, let's do that. Then you had to learn how to time your steps with your shots so you could actually move and shoot, and also how to cope with a monster punching you in the face for the times when you couldn't. Every avenue of play in UO meant learning a new set of physical mechanics if you wanted to be successful. Not only were they pretty distinct, but they were all fun in different ways. But what if I want nothing to do with hunting monsters and would rather just mine rocks all day so I can craft gear and sell it to players? What if I'm a neckbeard and a sociopath and the only way for me to enjoy the game is by killing other players and taking their stuff? Yes, you really could do that. Yes, you really could do just about anything you wanted in Ultima Online. And yes, I was terrible at PvP. Most people would be too embarrassed to admit they got beat to death by a man wielding nothing but a wooden stick after we tried to get revenge on him for stealing our cheese. But I sell pictures of my dirty hobbit feet on what OnlyFans, so trivial things like opinions and dignity no longer bother me. Dedicating your time to crafting was just as viable a way to play as role-playing Indiana Jones, following a treasure map to an artifact buried somewhere. Or you could be a pirate captain, looking for sea monsters, improving your ship, and developing your cruise skills as you went cruising for booty. You could be a bard, literally seducing monsters into attacking each other, or shaking your ass at them so hard they couldn't do anything but stare at it. You could tame a goddamn dragon, realize it wasn't even close to the strongest pet you can have, and start grinding gold because the scrolls to unlock legendary taming and lore are stupid expensive. Then get bored of grinding, snapshot your character using the Echo system, and start learning an entirely new set of skills so you could summon a demon. You can always go back, right? Or just start an entirely new character. I mean, really, there were so many things you could do, especially compared to the other MMOs on the market, that it breaks my heart most people don't even know this game anymore, let alone play it. The source of this freedom came from not hiding content behind a required character level. Instead, you got a pool of skill and stat points distributed as you liked between strength, dexterity, and intelligence. No level grinding, you just equipped a sword, shield, and some chainmail, and strolled into the nearest graveyard if you wanted to get better at sword fighting. Some took longer than others, but the payoff was always worthwhile. The joy of this process was that every achievement belonged to you. Whether it was as small as finally buying that fancy set of Valorite armor, or as big as slaying the Emperor Dragon. Gear wasn't permanent. In fact, it stayed on your body when you died, and you could only get it back if you could get back to loot your own corpse before it decayed or another player got to it. But gear was such a small part of your character compared to the skills and mechanics you developed. That stuff never went away. Your character was so much more personal, so much more an extension of yourself compared to other games because you built it entirely from nothing, your own way, instead of leveling up some generic archetype from 1 to max along a predetermined path through leveled zones. Finally, let's talk about the community. This is probably where UO shined the brightest. Games like WoW spoiled us with stuff like auction houses, raid finders, even NPC vendors who repair your stuff. Back in the day, if you wanted to fix your gear, you had to trade it to a player blacksmith and hope he was respectable enough not to steal your stuff. Then trade him his fee and maybe a tip if you liked him when he traded it back to you. That sounds sketchy, but that's how the community worked. You had to actually talk to people if you wanted things done. And back in the day, you actually could become server famous by doing things. There were famous smiths, famous warriors, even famous murderers whose name appearing on your screen almost always meant you were going to be kissing the dirt. I guess I should apologize to everyone here because I've been masturbating again. Hey, could we like stop using that joke?
dude, they're going to put me on a list. All that cool stuff I mentioned is happening right now, and you can experience it too. It's actually almost a disservice to associate this game with UO, because Outlands Now is so much more than UO ever was. Outlands took the framework UO was built on and improved upon it in every way. They've lovingly and completely rebuilt the world from the ground up. Each town has its own personality, and they all seem to attract players instead of just the capital. The dungeons are also bigger and better. Gone are the days of cave hallways with nothing but whatever monster origin decided to slap in there. Now we have stuff like Aegis Keep, with a clear theme of blood monsters hiding their gooey forms under the saggy skins of other critters, like a fantasy version of the thing. There are even distinct rooms with a clear purpose, like the training grounds where Aegis Knights hang out while they wait for you to show up so they can trample you with their blood courses. The community here is better than it's ever been. Now, instead of walking around town hoping to find a blacksmith to repair your stuff, simply post a request in the services section of the Discord channel. Or, in my favorite example of how good this community is, you can visit this house, planted right next to the outpost Moongate. This absolute gangster set up a free use repair bench for anyone to use, at their own expense. You can also use Discord to find groups, sell or buy stuff, or just shitpost in the general chat section. Don't do that though unless it's with pictures of your cat. They love cats in there. The addition of Discord streamlined the process of making a connection without removing any of the interaction. Plus, you still get that broader sense of community outside your moment-to-moment -moment interactions within the game. The devs deserve a special mention here too, because it's clear that every aspect of this server is a labor of love. I've seen the man in charge, Owen, sacrifice his weekend to fix server issues on more than one occasion. Pretty impressive for a free server. Oh, did I mention this was all free to play, by the way? Because it totally is. They've also added so much stuff into the game that I'm convinced the actual UO wouldn't have died if these guys had been running the show. Remember all that stuff about leveling up your boat crew or hunting for treasure? The actual UO had shades of that, but nothing like what we have here. These guys basically took everything that existed in the game and added not one, but multiple layers of depth. They're also constantly holding events, from live PvP tournaments you can go watch in-game, to holiday events, lore-related dungeon happenings, and more. Seriously, if you like MMOs, you owe it to yourself to try Outlands. All of that stuff the other MMOs try to sell you about playing your way are BS. You can actually do it here, and once you've realized the difference, you'll hold every MMO you ever play to a higher standard. Sure, there's a learning curve, but the falloff from getting pasted in the world isn't nearly as steep as it is in an MMO like Tarkov. The best way I could describe this game is like a biker bar full of puppies. It looks hard to get into, but once you're inside, you never want to leave. Sure, one might nip you a little too hard, but then you just call that puppy a motherfucker and start petting a different one. The steepest hill to climb is also the first, just getting your skills to where you need them. After you've mastered a skill or two, everything else comes more easily, and so on. The tiers of power climb are well established and reasonable to get back to if you fall off. Between the top to bottom updates, character building that looks more like you're drawing a picture than coloring one in, and after over 20 years still somehow having more emergent gameplay than, I think, any other game, this is the best ever iteration of the best ever MMO, and it deserves all the love in the world. Yes, things have changed, but the feelings of wonderment and adventure that made the original so great are still there, better than they ever used to be and I think that's incredibly special. There's a link in the description below if you want to visit the game that's been my home since I was 10. I don't think you'll regret it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>